Welcome to your A to Z guide to the 2021 Sao Paulo Grand Prix. The final sprint weekend of 2021 takes place at the iconic Interlagos circuit as F1 returns to Brazil for the first time since 2019. A track that always provides fans with memorable races, Interlagos gives us a perfect setting for race number 19 of the season as the championship fight rages on. In this race preview, we'll break down all the facts about this track and the characteristics that make it so special. And we'll also look at the sprint weekend schedule, the history of F1 racing in Brazil, and all the news surrounding this second race in the triple header. So let's get right down to business and look at the track facts for Interlagos. The Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache is a fantastic anti-clockwise racing circuit that is one of the shortest on the 2021 calendar. Continuing the theme from Mexico, Interlagos is another track located well above sea level, coming in at a modest 800 meters above sea level. The 4.3 kilometer circuit is one of the shortest laps on the calendar next to Monaco and Austria, and the track is comprised of 15 corners overall, 10 that go to the left, and five that go to the right. Since the addition of the second DRS zone, teams have opted for a higher downforce setup so they can gain the lap time in qualifying during sector two and not suffer as much in the low drag sectors of one and three. In turn, drivers will take their lap times at full throttle around 63% of the time, as from the exit of turn 12 to turn one, it's 1.2 kilometers of driving with your foot down to the floor. The pole sitter will start the sprint and Grand Prix races on the right-hand side of the grid, with the distance to the first braking zone being only 195 meters. Now one of the engineering challenges to Interlagos is keeping the left front tire in a good temperature window because from the exit of turn 10 until the entry of turn 6, the left front tire works very little and it cools very quickly. Weather can also play a huge factor in Sao Paulo at this time of year, and there are a number of places on the track where rivers can form if the rain is heavy enough. The first World Championship Brazilian Grand Prix was held at Interlagos back in 1973, and despite being off the calendar for a number of years, Interlagos has been the home for Formula One since 1990. 37 F1 Grand Prix have been held at this track, with 24 different winners of the Brazilian Grand Prix. The most winningest constructor at Interlagos has been Ferrari, who have taken 9 victories overall for 24% of total wins. McLaren are right behind with 8 wins of their own, as they enjoyed plenty of success with hometown hero Ayrton Senna back in the day. Then come Red Bull Racing with 5 victories of their own, and they are also the most recent team to have taken victory here in Brazil. Out of the current drivers on the grid, four have won previously at Interlagos, with Sebastian Vettel leading the way at three wins, his most recent being for Ferrari back here in 2017. Then comes Lewis Hamilton, who despite some good memories at Interlagos, has only won here twice before. And finally, Max Verstappen, whose lone win in Brazil came in 2019 for Red Bull, and of course, who could forget Kimi Raikkonen's lone Brazilian GP victory back in 2007 that sealed him his first and only Drivers' World Championship. One of the great aspects of Interlagos is that it is one of the easier tracks to overtake on. That means a good result can be possible from many places on the grid. Pole position is the most successful starting position, with 43% of race winners starting from pole, but 35% of drivers have also been able to win from second place. It is interesting to note that six out of the last seven Brazilian Grand Prix have been won from pole position. With this being an old school track with narrow characteristics and not much runoffs, the chances of seeing a safety car are relatively high with a 30% safety car probability for the race on Sunday. As mentioned off the top, this will be the final sprint weekend of 2021, so take note of the schedule changes and the breakdown of events.
If you'd like to watch these sessions with us this weekend, check out our live stream schedule for the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, as we'll be live for qualifying on Friday and the sprint qualifying on Saturday on our channel. We'll be providing you with live commentary, timing, and instant social media reaction, so come join us and interact with us in the live chat. Let's start by looking at the provisional weather forecast for Sao Paulo this weekend. The forecast can be unpredictable at this time of year in Sao Paulo, and we could see some rain this weekend. At the moment, rain is forecasted for qualifying on Friday and the sprint on Saturday, with a decently high chance of showers on both those days. Sunday is looking clear, however, but temperatures won't be very high all weekend long. Let's now look at the tire situation for Brazil. Pirelli have decided to go with a more aggressive allocation compared to 2019 as they bring the C2, C3, and C4 compounds. This should allow for more variation in race strategies come Sunday as the tire stress at Interlagos is about average. A reminder that teams get a free tire choice for Sunday's race despite having to run the softs in qualifying. Now here are the rest of your weekend notes for the 2021 Sao Paulo Grand Prix. Well, that should do it for your A to Z guide to the 2021 Sao Paulo Grand Prix. It's great to have Brazil back on the F1 calendar, and with one more sprint to go, this weekend should be quite entertaining as we're down to the last four races of 2021. We thank you very much for watching this race preview, and as always, if you enjoyed it, give this video a like and hit that subscribe button to show your support. We hope to see a lot of you this weekend on our channel for our live stream watch alongs, but until then, have yourselves a great day.